book is an unpublished book written by my brother, my brother Joe, who passed on about 10 years ago. And he wrote a slightly fictionalized account of a young man called John Harris. I don't know how many of you will recognize this name, but John Harris was hanged in Pretoria Central Prison at the age of 27 for planting a bomb at a railway station in Johannesburg, in, yeah, uh, which ended up uh, uh, sadly killing an elderly white woman who was arrested, imprisoned, and hanged. Apparently he went to the gallow singing, we shall overcome. It's a very powerful story and my brother captures it marvelously. The book is unpublished and I hope it will be published one day because it tells a story that needs to be heard. But it was those years at Wits that were so formative and exciting and interesting, to a point. And that's where the story of John Harris comes into play. Wits and, and uh, UCT were the two open universities at that time. Eh? And so for anybody coming to Wits, it was a new experience, mixing across the races, and it was a hotbed of political activism among young people. I was a member of the Student Liberal Association, which was only liberal in name, but was actually pretty left-wing and pro-Congress. And we held meetings and lectures and films and, and went into town and did demos. And uh, uh, in the morning paper had me climbing up a pole in the, in, in the front of the city hall in Durban where we held the demonstration and the police charged with batons. And somehow I managed to climb this pillar. I went to check it out the, other, the following day and it was impossible. It was too broad, but there I was halfway up this pillar in this photograph. I was also active in, in what was an association to the ANC, it was called the Congress of Democrats. It was in a white, white grouping of people who swore allegiance to the ANC. And uh, we did modest things. We, we sold newspapers. In fact, I spent Sundays and Saturdays selling The Guardian, which is ANC paper, in, uh, in, in Sophia Town and Alexander Township. That was quite an experience, going to the door, knocking on the door. A little kid would come up. And I'd hear the shout, Om Long. And uh, the father would come up and look at me curiously. We'd have a chat and he might or might not buy the paper. But that was the quality of one's political involvement. It was very intense. We thought it was very intense. It was radical. We thought it was very radical. In fact, it was neither. It was peripheral. It was a world apart from what was really going on in South Africa. And John Harris's story captures that spirit very keenly. He was a member of the Liberal Party and had an association, a group of young men and women who were like-minded. But within a short period of time, they began to fall away. And he realized that the political life at that time was being white and being an activist was almost irrelevant. Uh, you could not impinge on the reality of what was going on in South Africa. The apartheid regime was so powerful and so extreme. They were picking up people all over the place. They were dismembering organizations before they could even get started. In the Congress of Democrats, which I mentioned that I was a member of, Pete Bailefeld was also there. He turned out to be a police spy. So they knew everything that was going on. John Harris describes this very, very well. The suffocation of growing up in South Africa and being impotent, wanting to do something, wanting to make a mark, to make a statement, and being, in a sense, deprived of that opportunity. And I remember that feeling very well. It was a cause of deep depression. Some days I'd even end up in tears, not knowing what the hell I could do, what, I, what was possible, what was not possible. And I eventually left the country and went to England and then went to Canada and spent 40 years abroad. That was my 
because I realized that to take that next step, to commit myself to radical politics, revolutionary politics, would mean exactly what happened to John Harris. I would be making a statement of that kind. Thank <laughs> you.